I am Pops, and welcome to a Pop Spective, Alice in Borderland, season two in particular. I really love the first season. I know it was recommended after watching Squid Game. It basically, um, I did videos at the time. It was like kind of this on and off again times for me. Um, so I kind of have some regret. I actually thought, I, I actually rewatched about uh, five of the eight or nine episodes. I skipped a couple episodes of Squid Game, but I just rewatched some of them again. And I wouldn't be opposed to doing some videos or watch through, probably with someone else, though. I wouldn't want to do them on my own. And it was recommended, like, oh, watch Alice in Borderland. Pops, you're going to like that, too. And I really don't know how I felt about the ending, right? It's just like this kind of... They make these big changes, and I don't, I don't think they quite understand. And I, and I need to make sure that I'm very clear, right? I... I'm more of like I in, I'm into the uh, social engineering and the puzzles and those kinds of games. I I'm not really into anime. I'm not really into the manga. I'm really I'm not even a gamer, even though I do get the concept of the bosses and the hierarchies and leveling up and those kinds of things. I, I get all of that, but um, I have to give it to um, Shinsuke Sato, who I guess is the director adapting this because I've seen a lot of the side by sides of the designs and then the actors and the presentation and uh, Arasu and Usagi and Shishiyu and, you know, Anne and many of the other characters really look great and really appear to be very much in line with uh, what they're supposed to look like. And the show wasted no time because it picks up right after season one and we get right to, I, I will say the King of Spades, story arc with basically it's just on the street just shooting a dude that's almost like superhuman and he's just so talented at just killing people but there's like contradictions to me like from that opening sequence to later in the season where they're shooting from a high they're shooting from sides and then he's just walking in the street i don't i don't i'd have to kind of rewatch it a little bit to make sure that one makes sense because it's probably one of the elements that I don't enjoy nearly as much. Now, once you get to some of the other games, and, and and this is all explained pretty well about how they have to gather face cards and things like that, the concept that Aristu comes up with that we're going to buy into is that if I if I could just get all of these uh, done, then I, the game can at least come to uh, some sort of end or some sort of finality, right? Now, the one thing also is really, really cool about this show is they give a rat's behind to normal Western storytelling. They will do, I think it starts with episodes two and three, but it happens multiple times where they'll do a story and that game and that story sort of ends and they go right into another one. Then the episode ends. So you're only halfway through and then it goes into another episode and you're like, so it's not as perfectly aligned and linear. And I love that. I really enjoyed that a lot. I liked it. Um, there's also these great, metaphors in the games um, about how, you know, one was about overcoming fear, right? You have to overcome your fear to move on, right? And um, at some point, uh, Shishi Yu gets separated. And by the way, holy crap, was his portrayal and his stuff just done incredibly well. Like, I really, really love it. Um, that episode with the game called Beauty Contest, which is basically the lawyer is the king of diamonds and they have to fi figure out, you know, how to play this basically betting game and or this acid sort of falls on the loser if they get so many points and that kind of thing. Now, I will say this, though, um, with Shishi Yu, I didn't care for how do I say this? The actor and the look of the character doesn't seem believable to me in these uh, flashbacks as a doctor doesn't have sort of this. I get the smart and the genius element, but there's a there's a, a, a charisma slash a, a worn look about you when you go through that much schooling to be a doctor. And he looks more like just a, a runway model, right? That that part doesn't work for me as well, but him in the game works so well. Right. I love this premise. I love the premise of, you know, the metaphors of healthcare and and death panels with, you know, you know, who who gets a fair or just shake in all of this. Right. So things go along pretty well. I really love the show, love the games, things like that. But I really 
do want to kind of get to what my issue with the show is, is kind of how it wraps up. Because you have this penultimate episode where, you know, they have to figure out how to face off and defeat the, the king of spades. So it's basically like a major shootout. People, characters are dying. All sorts of crazy stuff happens. And it's not bad. There's some contrivances along the way. But then we get to the final episode, the big twist episode game, right? And you end up with this, like, moment where he's going to go play croquet with the queen of hearts and it's all about like just lasting as long as you can just get through the game right and she's purposely dragging all this out and meanwhile uh, erisu is there he's she he's with uh, usagi she's bleeding out because she'd gotten her injured during the king of spades battle but they don't know how to end it and what they do is they start playing this game with us about uh, you're in a matrix or it was aliens. It's a nuclear war. Is it AI? I'm just kidding. You know, and it's like, what, 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 what are you doing? And, and the twist is very much um, not something I liked at all. Like it basically is uh, the fireworks that are brought up that people see in this street scene is actually like these meteorites that are coming and hitting and, it's about life and death and who survives and doesn't survive. So Erisute's friends don't last long in the game because they really did pass away. And everyone that's been here is sort of like left with this choice to stay in the game or go back to reality. They live, they die. It's this very, you know, super spiritual metaphysical type illusion versus real thing. And I really, really, really did not like that at all. I thought this whole thing just... It kind of ruined it for me. I really, really did not like this last episode. And what they do is they end it and you have this part and then the cards are on this table and they blow away and there's a Joker card. So now it's just about a bunch of speculation of season three, how it could be handled. Is there a game? Is it not? What's real? What's not real? I just, I oh, please just stop. Can't there just be a big bad person? Can't there just be a big bad person that we all just love to hate? A super villain that can't be beat, defeated or something. Okay, so let's see. Um, some high points and low points. Uh, I just love the idea again that the episodes can be split in half. The dude, the queen, the king of clubs, the dude that's running around naked in that game was freaking <laughs> crazy, man. That was just that was that was a crazy game, man. Um, uh, Aguni um, is like a true alpha. Like it was. It's interesting to me that they'll play up these guys in the show, and most of them are like this beta version of a male who don't seem nearly that intimidating or really that interesting. Goonie really is pretty cool and very interesting and dynamic. Um, I don't necessarily think that you can go off and praise a show and the absurdity of a show like this. And then also like, you know, being critical of John wick or vice versa. I mean, like you have to have a suspension of disbelief to just enjoy a show on this level. Um, but at the end of the day, when you end up with this ending the way you do, it's like, this is like, you know, man in the high castle weird. It's like, what, what are you doing? Like, you, it's just, it takes, it took too long to get through that episode and get to its point. And then it's such a, like a religious allegory, spiritual allegory that they're going for without actually having any of those principles that it doesn't really work for me. Um, but really, the whole show just stems around Erisu and Usagi. They have a sweet relationship, long hugs, you know, different things like that. Um, she has a great moment, you know, about hope. There's, there's, there's just a lot of little things to love about the show and have a good time. But the pretentiousness of this ending, this, this sort of like meta metaphor for a purgatory of the game or whatever, I, I just don't care for that end. I, I just did not like that at all. I just really wanted it to be a game within a game within a game, you know, or matrix or aliens. I'm fine with, I'm fine with a lot of those more than I am the spiritual thing. I got to be honest. I don't, I don't like the idea that, Oh, you've been there. So you were actually dead for uh, a whole minute. And now you decide that you want to live. So therefore you're alive in real life, but don't remember everything. It's like, what? Like, I don't, huh? Like, I, I don't know. So, Anyway, that's my take on the show. I'd love to hear from you guys. I want to reach out to like Brandon, the anime guy or somebody. I don't know if this is an air arena that he enjoys or doesn't or whatever, but because he's going to be more versed in the uh, 
the manga and anime part of it that I am not. Uh, cause I, I'm just like the normie and all of this. Um, but yeah, I maybe you guys hit me up. Tell me what you guys think. I, I really enjoyed it a lot. I love the games and the puzzle stuff. And I'm sure there are other shows like this. If you guys want to recommend some others that are kind of like down that Avenue, feel free to let me know. Uh, I appreciate that. So, and with that, uh, I am pops. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, it's super cool and appreciate this, uh, as being something good to watch. So that's my take. Mm -hmm.